Welcome to our next Real Virtual I.O. tutorial. This week I am showing you how to add a conveyor to this scene and how to create parts with a source. We are going to do everything in this tutorial based on our last week's tutorial scene and first thing you should do is to copy the last week's scene and to rename it to Tutorial 04. We are going to add a conveyor to our scene. To do this, we'll need a 3D model of the conveyor. Just like last week, we'll be using 3D Find It to get it. If you don't already have an account, don't worry, it's free and easy to sign up. So let's go ahead and select a conveyor from robot units. I've put it in conveyor and belt into the search field. And I selected this conveyor here from robot units. You should put in a width of 800 millimeters and a length of 4000 millimeters. Once we have everything set, we can create a 3D part as a Koyada file. We need to select here Koyada and download it. Once it's created, we can download it to our computer. After downloading the file, we need to unzip it and drag and drop the file into our tutorial folder. Maybe it's now better to organize it a little bit. We are going to create a new folder. It's called cat. And I'm putting all our imported cat files into this folder. You can rearrange your project structure every time you need to do this and you should always keep it clear and organized. And don't worry, you can change the location of the files without destroying anything of the relations to the components in your scene. Before putting the conveyor into our scene, we should make sure that the scale factor is set to 0, 0, 1. So like this, zero, zero, 1, and we need to apply. Now we can drag and drop this file into our scene. But we need to do it into the scene and not into the game window. So once again, here it is. And we can rearrange the position a little bit by, let's put that up here by rotating it around the axis. And here we have a nice conveyor for later on feeding parts to the gantry. If you don't like the colors of our imported components, we can take the materials within Real Virtual and put them on the conveyor. Okay, now it looks like a nice belt conveyor. But still, when starting the simulation, nothing will happen because our conveyor is still a very static part without any movements uh, defined for the conveyor belt. And we are also still missing a source for the parts. Before taking care about the source for the parts, we are taking care about the kinematic for the conveyor. We need to select the conveyor belt and uh, put on the conveyor belt a drive. But not only a drive, we also need a transport surface. Automatically by adding a drive and a transport surface, the transport surface will be added 
as a relation to the drive and so the drive knows not to move it really in an axis away it now knows to move the transport surface itself we can again change the directions i would like to revert the direction so that the forward direction is going to our gantry and that's it we already defined a conveyor for testing it i'm putting jog forward to true this will put the conveyor to always run when starting the simulation and maybe let's increase a little bit the speed to 300 millimeters per second and for testing purposes i can now push insert on my keyboard which will insert a standard source directly in the middle of our conveyor and i'm just moving it to the beginning of the conveyor that's the standard source or the standard can which you already know from our demo scene and because we turn the conveyor on i'm now able to start the simulation and as you can see the cans are produced and they will fall down at the end of the conveyor you might see that the conveyor surface is flickering a little bit and that's due to the transport surface here's a texture scale in here which relates the texture of the material to the transport surface uh, to the transport speed and it needs to be aligned uh, especially if you've got really visible textures on it to uh, the texture itself and i'm putting in here i think something like that and you will see the flickering has gone away Let's check a little bit what's happened in the scene. By adding a transport surface, automatically a rigid body and a box collider has been added to the transport surface. Usually I would recommend to use the most simple collider, so a box collider, but by changing here the setting to mesh collider, you could also use a mesh collider for the transport surface. By using a mesh collider, the behavior at the end where the belt is round will be a little bit more realistic. But very often that's not needed. Additionally, everything uh, what's colliding, so all the physics which are colliding, so all the transported goods, which we are calling MU for movable unit, uh, with the conveyors, for example, or the mo uh, bottom, they're colliding because of colliders. And all these colliders are on certain layers. And by adding a transport surface, automatically this component has been added to the layer G4A transport. And if we check the player settings in build settings and in player settings, we are having here the physics settings. And you see we are having some standard uh, game for automation or real virtual layers and some relations for collision detection between the layers. We don't check everything against everything because that might reduce the performance. It doesn't, it, it's not important in this uh, simple small models, but in bigger models, it really makes a difference. So that's why we are using some limited collision settings and automatically all the real virtual parts are set it to certain layers. So for example, if we are defining a transport surface, it's on the layer transport, as well as the bottom of the scene should be also on the same layer transport. So everything which is, I would say, surrounding, colliding with your movable units 
should be on the layer transport. The source itself is just uh, like a template for a new movable unit. By starting, at the end the source hides itself and it regenerates itself. So the source is the template and it regenerates uh, cans based on the properties of the source. So if you look in the source, you can see the properties of the source and for example here the automatic generation property is turned on. That means that we generate automatically new, new cans if the distance between the last created can and the source itself is more than 300 millimeters. We can also define a random distance in a range of maybe 100 millimeters and you will see that the distance between our cans is changing. There are several options. For example, you could also limit the number of generated MUs or later on we learn how to generate MUs based on, for example, PLC signals. These cans now, which we are producing, some themselves are having several sen uh, layers on them and there are two. One is the sensor MU layer, a simple box collider for detecting the cans by sensors, which we learn later on in a later on tutorial. And we are also having a transport MU collider, which is uh, used for I'm just stopping it so we can, which is used for collision. No, not this one here. That's the sensor layer. And in here, we are having the mesh collider on the layer G4A transport MU, which is the layer for the transport collisions on the MU. We don't need urgently two colliding uh, colliders on an MU and later on by creating our own source we will learn how to make a very simple MU by just uh, which is having just one collider. That's it for this tutorial. We learned how to define our first sources and how to define transport surfaces for moving movable units on transport systems. In our next tutorial, we are going to create our own source and we'll learn first uh, sensors to detect components, for example, here on the transport surface. Thanks for watching this tutorial and I wish you a lot of fun with Real Virtual. Bye bye.